Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. Today I'll be looking at how to play and set up and hold certain positions on the map Shutout. Now, this is a remake of Lockout or Blackout, as you may remember, and this was originally created in Halo 2. I think it worked best in Halo 2, but that's just my opinion. We'll be going over some of the callouts of the map locations first. So if you want to use the directory in the description of this video to skip that, and you may already know all the calls to this map, use the directory of this video to skip that and jump straight to the gameplay and the setup hold locations. As it is, I would recommend watching the entire video just to brush up on some of your callouts and things of that nature. Now, I'll let's start with the tower or the building we spawn in, so to speak, and that is this yellow building called Library, okay? This is top library where we spawn. You can immediately drop down here for the sword, which spawns bottom library or bottom yellow. Some people call this yellow in Halo 4 simply because of its yellow nature. This is library. All right, pushing over into this tower, this whole central tower structure is called BR Tower. All right, so you can call it BR1 for the first floor of the BR Tower, BR2 for the second floor of the BR Tower, and BR3 for the third floor of the BR Tower. Um, this is the ramp leading up to BR Tower, obviously. And then moving on, um, you have the bottom center area. And if you drop down from bottom center, you'll drop straight onto the scatter shot, which does spawn a bottom green or bottom shotgun tunnel, as I would like to call it. Shotgun tunnel feeds into the bottom lift room. When you lift up this lift, you're going to be in top lift room, top lift house. Um, that's probably the most unfamiliar call out I am. I call it lift house. Probably other people have different call outs for it. Moving over to here, this is where the sniper does spawn right here, top snipe tower. Now you can call this S1 for the bottom of snipe tower, just S1, or S2 for uh, snipe tower 2. And a very, very common call out for this ramp specifically is called elbow. This is where blue team does spawn, and it is crucial that you understand um, the general call outs for this map. I don't mean to get super specific. I'm sure there's very specific callouts. For example, uh, this jump um, to this bar and then this jump to this little tower and up here to the sniper rifle. I'm sure there's very, very specific callouts for these various jumps, but I just need to give you that general overview before, overview before we begin the film because I'm going to be teaching you how to basically hold various areas of the map and the general setup you should have. Now, I would like to state before beginning this gameplay that this is not an extremely impressive gameplay from my standpoint or necessarily the enemy player standpoint. During about half the film, they are actually lacking a player, um, and we only give up three deaths to the enemy team. So the gameplay you're about to see is kind of a domination. As you see, we rush across top middle to immediately try to gain control of the snipe tower, which is crucial. Um, I am nated by my teammate from behind by a pulse grenade just a bit ago. You can see armchair America getting a very sick triple with the sniper rifle as we look for enemy spawns. Now my teammates are cleaning up enemy players bottom center and this part is really just filler as I start BRing this guy who's on BR3 right now. I start shooting him across the map. I'm going to push up to get a better angle on this guy because I'm pretty sure he's still here as I just got a hit marker with my plasma grenade. This is just a really dumb job. This just shows the IQ level of the enemy player staying in this position, acting like I'm not going to know where he is, and then I just give him a really nice 4 or 5 shot across the map. I see this guy pushing top middle, get the call out, start shooting him, and now I'm going to push across to top lift house, just making sure my teammates have some support here. Now, I want to give you some tips on why I stay here. Notice how I'm just help, trying to help my teammates out right here. But now, at this exact moment, is when I want to go over the setup that we held for the rest of the game. You can see we're already 15 kills, 0 deaths. The enemy team does have only 3 players at this point. They'll gain another player shortly later on. Um, you can see my teammate, um, Armchair America, has a sniper rifle on Snipe 2. He wants to remain on this floor or on this little ramp leading up to Sniper. Um, and he wants to be pretty aggressive with that sniper rifle, backing down and letting um, either me at top lift house or my, our teammate at top BR3 to take care of people charging him across um, the top center of the map. Now there are several very key things I want to go over. With this setup that you're seeing right now, and oh yeah, I need to mention this player down here. This player is interchangeable. 
he can either remain in the bottom of this bit building or he can remain up top here. It really doesn't matter either way. Um, his position is interchangeable. It's just crucial that he doesn't push all the way out into the center or all the way out down to the very center of elbow. As long as we hold the positions we are holding right now in the film, the enemy players are in a unique spawn trap situation. And I'm not talking about spawn trapping as in spawn killing them off, although that is possible from specific situations, which I will talk about later on the film. But basically, what ends up happening is the enemy players generally spawn in only three locations when you are holding this setup against them. And that is specifically, the most common location is bottom library. For whatever reason, um, mysterious to me, to be honest, um, the game does not spawn players top library when you are holding this setup. Now, I am saying in general for the vast majority of cases, again, I'm not saying this is 100% absolute of the time, you'll be able to see during this film what I mean by that. Okay? They spawn the majority of the time bottom library down here, and um, sometimes occasionally they will spawn in the bottom lift room right here, and even more rarely, they will sometimes spawn on elbow. Now, whether they spawn on elbow vastly depends on whether your secondary teammate on Snipe Tower is looking at elbow or not. For example, this teammate right here is kind of looking in that direction, so it's very unlikely they're going to spawn right there. As it is, those are the three main locations that the enemy players will spawn, and I want to move on with the gameplay to keep your interest so I can show you what I mean. Now notice how the enemy players have spawned bottom library. All three of them are there, and some of them are pushing bottom center right now. I want you to notice the angle my teammate is using right now, spun, getting some really great angles here. Notice how he's not dropping. Just a key tip right here. You can jump on top of either railing right here, either the railing right here or the railing right here, and then you can crouch jump up on this little ramp or this little ramp right here and gain easy access to the top center. You can stand or crouch right here and you won't fall off. It's, it's an angled enough ledge that you can hold this position and you can look all along this ramp as the enemy team um, spawns bottom library and they will spawn continuously there no matter if you're standing here or not. It's a really nice position to hold. It's a very good job. You can see my teammate getting some really good snipes now. <laughs> Unfortunately the killer just popped up on my screen was an enemy player who ab accidentally, or should I say, maybe even on purpose, meleeed his teammate while he's one shot. Now you can see that this player just randomly spawned in the bottom of lift tower, immediately lifted up. That's why I crouched there. Now I do pick up the carbine here, because I know we're facing people who aren't that good, so get a few kills with the carbine to try to max out that commendation eventually. I haven't maxed that weapon out. Now you can see once again on my radar, two people have spawned bottom lift room. Okay, <clears throat> and I want to I go over a few of my options here. If both of these players lift up at the same time, there are two things that I can generally do. One of them is to remain on the side here, okay, and then drop down, okay, and let my teammate <clears throat> look from top snipe, um, or over here, knows how my teammate has pushed up to this ramp area. This is a really good idea because he doesn't see any players necessarily down here. Notice how he has a really good angle of some of the sight lines down here in bottom library. And he can also push up here and look at me. So instead of doing what I just said, and that is staying on this side so I can drop down onto this ledge, or I could drop down to this ledge over the side, I'm obviously too far away from the lift to do that. For, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up as this guy lift up, and I'm going to use this angle right here. I'm going to use this ramp, and you can just walk up and down it very easily. And my teammate gets a nice snipe there as that first guy lifts up, and then you can see this other player ends up retreating. Now he does go off my radar, so I know he's going to be right down there on the bottom of lift room. So I'm just going to wait here and see what he does. He ends up lifting up and then dropping down as the lift does fail. Then I drop down right on top of him. He doesn't use his Promethean Vision to very much effect here. And I'm going to clean him up. Now, I would like to state that I did um, leave my position behind, okay? Notice how we're still holding the same general setup, okay? You have my teammate floating around back sniper ramp and me floating around this general area. I can drop, okay? I can drop here and take down p out people. I can drop to the bottom of the lift room and take out people. What's crucial is that I don't remain there for a long period of time. And I'll actually show you an example of this later on in the film. <clears throat> so you can see the guy spawning bottom lift room. And you can see this guy pushes up and I give him the easy carbine shots here. Just watching elbow spawn here. 
I almost died here because a guy did spawn top library. Now I want to point out this really quickly. Uh, so you can see how I get this kill. And um, let's watch my teammate here as he drops. Okay, notice how he drops and an enemy player spawns library. All right, he spawns um, right over here in this general area. This is one of the reasons why this player, more importantly, needs to stay up on this general area. Not only because it takes much longer to get up here than, than my position, I can easily lift up very quickly, but he needs to stay in that top power position because of spawns like this. You can see a teammate spawn here, an enemy player spawn here and here, okay? And I just want you want to say very clearly how my teammate just dropped from the top of the tower. I just want you to notice that very, very clearly as he drops right here and immediately two players end up spawning on this position, okay? And it is crucial to understand that um, probably more than anything else, you want to have at least one player here, a top sniper at all times, period, and at least one guy up here at all times, period, okay? If he's trying to stay alive, if your teammate's trying to stay alive and he drops to BR2 to stay alive, that's okay. What I'm trying to say is these positions are crit crucial to hold. My position and the second guy who's at Snipe Tower is a less important position, and we can float around a little bit more around our position. So right here again, I'm just lifting straight up to um, top lift house here. I'm going to try to get an angle on these guys. You, you see my teammate who's floating around with a sword trying to take out people. Unfortunately, he ends up giving away our first death. I'm not sure he why he overextended with a sword like that. This guy is one shot, so you can see I dropped down accidentally. I thought I wasn't going to get him by shooting him in the head like that. This guy ends up pursuing me, and I give him a nasty four shot as I thruster pack back, top lift. And during that period of time, it is possible for people to spawn um, up here. And you can see, I immediately look towards my teammate because he's calling out, I need help, I need help. So he, thankfully, he had a scatter shot. But you can see right there where these two players spawn bottom library, okay? And then they push up. And by the way, since sword spawns bottom library, you need to be expecting them to have a sword at all times, even a shotgun, okay? That's probably why some of the power weapons, close range power weapons, spawn on the bottom portion of the map so that if you're trapped down here, you're not completely at a disadvantage. But I want to pause here and mention a very, very key characteristic. If you're playing Infinity Slayer, one of the best ways to break this setup, if you are being destroyed by it, and you are the enemy team, or you're the team spawning bottom library, and you're just like, oh my gosh, these people are, are completely destroying us. You want to load out with a jetpack, okay? All four of you. Wait till you all respawn here, crouch, then thrust, then jetpack up this area right to here, and then run around this area, okay? There is a very small window here at, that the enemy team could snipe you, but the enemy player is not going to be able to snipe all four of you, and you're going to be able to push up the BR tower and control it. Now, yes, you're still at a disadvantage because the enemy team does have the sniper spawn, but pushing, toward, pushing through bottom middle to snipe is just, uh, it just, it's a deadly idea for multiple reasons, um, including that there's two players over here if you're holding this setup correctly you need to use the jetpack. If you're not using the jetpack, it is much more difficult to break the setup. Basically, you have to charge into BR Tower. Once again, you have to charge up this little ramp. You have to try to maintain shots on this guy and back, make him back down, and then get into BR2 and somehow get into top library so that then you can push around through this angle over there. During that entire time, it's easy to get sniped. So it's very difficult if the enemy team is holding the position correctly. That's a few ideas on how to break the setup, but let's move on with how to hold the setup. You can see this enemy player, and I want you to notice my patience as I realize once he pulls out his sword that he just grabbed the scatter shot and has a sword as well. There is no way this player is going anywhere, as I've never seen any of them use the jetpack up to this point. There's no way he's doing anything. So notice how I'm just very, very passive here. I just sit here and I wait for him to make his move. And I want you to notice how eventually I start to do something. And what I do is I rush, I run forward here a little bit um, as my teammates take care of that guy bottom center there. And I fake forward on my radar. Now, I know this player is going to realize that I've gone above him as soon as I'm up here because he'll see that I've gone above him on my radar. But I really wanted to try to fake forward as if I was trying to grab grenades. This enemy player probably knows I don't have grenades because I didn't throw any at him yet. I would have been able to easily kill him with two perfectly placed grenades. So I come up here, 
and you can see the enemy player right here behind me which is being distracted by my teammates and this guy ends up charging out the way main guy the main and sorry the main mistake this player made was that he didn't look upwards what this player should have done is back up looking upwards to jump and as soon as his reticle turns red he should have pulled the trigger to lunge at me and he would have easily been able to get that kill on me had he done that but instead he is going the longer around on me even able to easily clean him up now moving on with the film you can still see their spawning bottom library see my teammates spun getting some excellent shots down on them and i would like to say i do get the most kills in this game of all my teammates um, this is just a really good idea with the scatter shot dropping down here temporarily. And I do want to point out in this film how hosty the scatter shot is. The scatter shot when you are host, or when you, um, for lack of a better way of putting it, when you have an extremely good connection to your game, um, basically you are able to get kills like the one you just saw, where it's extremely long range, and for whatever reason you're able to, your, your shots connect with the scatter shot. The Scattershot Railgun and Spartan Laser are some of the most hosty Halo weapons I've ever seen, at least up to this point in my experience. You really, when you are host, those games, those weapons work insanely well. You can see Primus is now on a killing frenzy. You can see that guy randomly spawned elbow, but we're able to very quickly take him out. Now right here is another example, as this guy throws two grenades and just crouching, waiting for him to lift up. Here's another great example of a host Scattershot. I want you to notice the distance and the fact that I only fire one shot to kill this guy. Not only is the kill instantaneous, and I can immediately see that I killed him so I don't have to fire a second shot, but it is from such a long range that it's unbelievable. And this is just one of the reasons why having host of the scatter shot is so advantageous because you can get kills like this. Very, very fast, quick connection, um, swipe kills like that. We're still holding this position. I can see this guy crouching down here. I don't have any grenades. Um, and right here, I see this guy bottom center. Um, and I am going to end up shooting him and trying to um, get him weak here. And this guy has um, some weakness. Now, I want you to notice what occurs here. Okay? I've been away from the top lift room for a while. And as I lift up, you can see on my radar, as I lift up, this guy spawns top lift room. It's really unfortunate for him. He just spawned there. And I, again, want to point out the insane host shot with the scatter shot as I lift up and shoot him from an insane distance, okay, and immediately get the kill. Now, I'm not saying by if you, when you have host, you are guaranteed an instant kill with the scatter shot. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that it, the scatter shot has a tendency to overall, in general, kill people better and work fat better at longer ranges when you have host. I'm not saying it's a perfect weapon. It is far removed from the shotgun or the fuel rod in terms of close to mid-range effectiveness for sure. Now you can see all three enemy players spawned on elbow, which is really crucial that we play this position right. The main thing the enemy players did wrong here is that this player who's in the bottom of lift room right now needed to lift up now. He is just crouching around, not paying attention. He could have easily lifted up and killed, have killed me. And by the way, if you're a top lift room, you can drop down as people lift right here. Okay, and then you can sort of get away. And that's one of the ways you can deal with people lifting up is you can drop down to bottom elbow and, and let your teammates over here and here take them out. Especially if you know all the enemy teams spawned on elbow or the bottom of the lift room and it's pushing you. Just another, just throwing out a few tips, trying to make this gameplay as worthwhile to watch as possible. Now you see this, I do charge this guy because I'm worried that his grenades are going to hit me. So I then lift back up the top lift room. Five kills remaining, um, and you can see I'm just checking library spawns. My teammate calls out a few guys there. Um, the sniper does spawn again as I'm going to watch these guys heading to the bottom of the lift room again. I'm just going to wait here for him to lift. There's no reason for me to rush this guy. Um, again, I'm just waiting here. Now, it's unfortunate because we end up losing track of the number of enemy players. We do know there's only three of them at this point. So I get a little bit um, overextensive here at, at the last portion of the film um, because we lose track of a guy who's camping bottom middle. We're not exactly aware of exactly his location. He ends up camping there for some time. As you can see on my radar, him just not appearing, up, appearing at all. Um, Instead of taking out this player, and immediately he, you can see the camping player ends up taking me out. That's only, um, 
I believe, the third death we gave up to the enemy players. So guys, I hope this helped you understand how to play um, Shutout um, in Halo 4. This general setup works very well. I look forward to getting some gameplay where we're facing better people. I'm un Unfortunately, I'm, I apologize again for the lack of competitiveness from the enemy team players. But unfortunately, this was one of the very few games I got where the entire enemy team didn't quit out on Shutout because I'm, I, me and the teammates I'm playing with are pretty good uh, at understanding the strategy and holding it once my teammates get it. And notice how my teammates have two sniper rifles now. This will ine inevitably occur if you're able to hold the setup for that amount of time. The last few things I want to throw in are a few jumps um, that I didn't mention. One of them is that if you get over here, you can crouch jump onto over here. You can also jump on this little ledge and walk all the way around here. This is great if you're taking over Snipe Tower. You can sort of make this double jump, jump, jump here to top snipe, then up here. And it's very difficult for the enemy team to know exactly where you are when you do that. Another jump, and just jumps in general that are heavily underestimated on this map, is that when you're trying to break the setup, let's say let's say you've broken the setup on VR Tower. You have control of that VR Tower, and you've suppressed them enough across the map that you've, you're able to get one guy top lift room, which is optimal, okay? And so you're, you're going to immediately charge three players across top middle to try to get regain control of Snipe Tower while holding one guy top lift room. One of the ways you can do this is you can drop down and fake drop Okay, you can drop down, try to try to suppress whoever's looking on the bottom tower. Likely you can nade right here, you can nade, because this sniper is likely going to be looking bottom tower if he's suppressed. If this enemy sniper rifle player is suppressed, he's probably going to be dropping down here and just watching this bottom hallway for um, people surprising us bottom middle. You can drop, and then you can immediately jump onto this ledge, crouch jump, it's very important to realize this is a crouch jump, onto this little ledge right here. Okay, you can jump onto that. Then you can make a normal jump up on top of the tower. And if you get grenaded, you can then jump on top of this little pillar, jump on top of this little area, and then jump to top snipe. This is a great way. If you can figure out how to use the jumps to stay alive in this area and just stay really, really annoying to the enemy team, you can stay alive here for a very extensive period of time, especially with a thruster pack. As you can see, you could just stay right here you could fall off literally the map right here and then thrust your pack back on to the map. The same thing or it goes for here. Um, you could literally jump off the map. I'm dead serious. You could you could get be right here, jump off the map right here, and then thrust your pack onto this little ledge and you, and just drop down and be able to get some really nice escape and getaway positions. So overall, guys, this is my thoughts on shutout. I know a few people asked for that. I hope this video helped you understand how to play the map better overall, and I'll see you guys on the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace.